Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, coffee break today on November 30. My name is Mathieu Bouchard, I'm the Surface uh, Product Manager at Edify. So I'm managing all the products that we use for Surface eddy current inspections. Um, I, I realized recently that most of the time when we do uh, Edify coffee breaks, we take the opportunity to present new products and novel a novel software uh, features that were added recently. And today I wanted to do things a little bit different. I want to talk about one technology that has been around for uh, almost eight years now. So uh, one of the most iconic and most well-known technology in Edify's portfolio, and this is the Shark technology. So the Shark uh, was released uh, at first in 2014. And ever since every single year, we have been working on the software algorithms. We have been working on expanding the, the capability of Shark with different alloys of materials. And so today I just wanna sh take the opportunity to show where we are with this product and also talk about some new applications. We have clients that are using this Shark technology for, for tons of really exciting projects, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So uh, what we use Shark for is to inspect uh, carbon steel surfaces like this. So it could be, in this case, this is a carbon steel weld, uh, but it could be the surface of a pressure vessel. It could be uh, a floor, a tank floor that is in carbon steel and we want to uh, inspect the, the wells or the surfaces for crack. So we are using Shark to detect uh, surface breaking cracks at the surface. Uh, so when you look at, at a, a well like this one, you could think that we can inspect this with, uh, you know, penetrant testing uh, or, or just visual inspection in general. But those technologies are really time consuming. If we think about penetrant testing, you will need to first clean your well properly. You will need to apply paint, apply uh, the penetrant itself, then the revealer, and there's some, some waiting period in between. So it makes it that... If you're inspecting a small well like the one I have here, it's it's perfectly fine. You will get really good detection. But if you have to inspect a full pressure vessel or 85 pressure vessels uh, at the same location, it will just be extremely time consuming. And, and another limitation of those visual methods is that it's true for, for penetrant testing, but even more true, I think, for magnetic particle testing, is that you don't have any information on the depth that the cracks are. So if you are inspecting a, a two millimeter deep flaw, will be hard to distinguish from a four millimeter deep flaw using only visual inspection. So this is kind of the thinking that we had when we first developed the shark technology is that not only we wanted to inspect the welds to detect the cracks, but we also wanted to size them and know if it's a superficial cracks or something more significant that needs uh, addressing. So let me move the camera just to show you the probe a little bit better. Right here. So this is the probe. The shark probe, the one that you have seen uh, for a while now, we call this one the array probe because it's made of 22 uh, elements individually spring-loaded so that uh, you cover essentially two inches in one pass. I will do a, a live scan just after to show you the type of uh, results that you get with this. So you're inspecting two inches wide, about 52 or 53 millimeters. Uh, and each of these elements is spring-loaded individually, so that if you have a weld, when, when I apply this, this, uh, this surface here against the weld, it ensures good contact on the cap, but also on the toe of each side and on the heat-affected zone. So when you do your scan, you will get uh, good contact everywhere. Those sensors are made of ceramic, so they are extremely resistant to abrasion, to wear. Uh, we've been using ceramic now for four years, I think, so about half the lifetime of the shark. And we really never heard about a, a ceramic finger uh, getting worn out completely. So it really, really takes a long time to, get, to go through ceramic material when inspecting uh, carbon steel. Which is good, because if those, those fingers were made of plastic, it would go through the plastic much faster uh, when you're rubbing against uh, carbon steel. On the side here, you have the uh, encoder. So it's just a wheel that uh, rolls on the surface that record your data so that if you're inspecting, uh, you know, 100 feet of scan in one data, you will know exactly the, the position of every uh, flaw you detect. 
those wheels on the sides are not encoder. They're just made so that the, the probe is stable when you apply pressure on it. At the top here, you have some uh, buttons uh, just to null the probe, start your acquisition, calibrate, so that you can do pretty much everything uh, not having to go back to your instrument all the time. So this, uh, as I will show uh, during the scan, this is really operator dependent. All you have to do is apply good pressure. Um, some uh, users are using a, some kind of crawler or robot that just applies a spring-loaded pressure on top of the probe and pushes it. But it, if, you, if you're doing those scans manually, it's perfectly fine. You just need to make sure that the probe is in good contact. And then you move forward in the direction of the arrow. Um, so let me switch now to a magnify so that you can have a view of what I'm doing in the software as well. So in the software here, um, some of you will be familiar with magnify, some not. I don't want to spend too much time on the basic functionalities, but essentially what I'll do is I will go select a, the, the shark setup from what we call the default master list. So this is just a list of all the... the all the setup that are embedded into the system. So shark, but weld, this is the one. And I'll go right away to my acquisition screen. So what's really nice about shark is that you don't need to build your own sizing curves. You don't need to have a reference standard with, with flaws of known depth. This is, this is commonly a problem with eddy current array and just eddy current in general is that if you want to do depth sizing, you'll need to figure out, figure out a way to make your own uh, sizing curves and sizing table with, with, with known flaws. But this is the beauty of Shark is that everything has been done by Edify over eight years of development and improvements. And now when you load this setup in Magnify, everything is embedded. The software knows exactly what it's doing and it will give you the, the, the depth values on all uh, carbon steel surfaces. So first time, first thing I will do, I will calibrate my probe on this small aluminum plate that you have here. So this uh, this is just a uh, standard aluminum that we use for calibration. And the reason why we use aluminum instead of carbon steel is that aluminum is extremely uh, stable in terms of uh, surface um, surface conductivity. It doesn't have any magnetic permeability. So that if a hundred different users calibrate on this piece of aluminum. Well, they will get the same result a hundred times, which is not true if we do it on carbon steel because of all the changes of magnetic properties, all the changes of conductivity, uh, you cannot reliably calibrate your probe on carbon steel. So this is why we use aluminum. So for the calibration, I will start by nulling my probe. I always null the shark probe in the air, which is a little bit counterintuitive when we use eddy currents, but again, we don't want to affect the calibration and the null by, with carbon steel because of all the properties that are always changing. So once I null, I just hit the calibration button right here. And as you can see on the screen, it's it launched this calibration uh, process right here. So I have three steps to go through. The, the first one is the air. So I just need to hold my probe in the air, hit calibration again. And as you see it, for about one second, it took some data in the air that it will use as my reference. Step number two, the aluminum. What this will do here is that every single one of those 22 sensors will sense the aluminum and they will basically be calibrated so that afterward, they, each of them will provide exactly the same value and exactly the same signal. So I set my probe on the aluminum, I hit calibrate once more. It took some data in the aluminum. And finally, I repeat the process on my carbon steel. This is just to give the software a reference of what type of carbon steel we are dealing with. So you see all the color lines in the, in the setup. It doesn't matter, it's not calibrated yet. So you need to, to press one last time to calibrate the probe. It took maybe two seconds, it's already done you can close the window by clicking this once more. 
So now my probe has been calibrated, my probe has been nulled. The only thing I have left to do is to do my actual uh, scan. So once again, I null with my probe lying in the air. I press on it and I can start. All right, so let, let us go back to magnify. There we go. So you can see already on the screen that you have some, uh, it, it's quite obvious where the flaws are located, but you still have some of this uh, background noise, I would say that you see on the screen. And the reason for this background noise is what I said, is the fact that the, the magnetic permeability of carbon steel is never very stable. It changes always, it changes for, for one plate to another, but more importantly, it changes within a single scan. The permeability will change. So what I need to do here, I need to compensate my signal, compensate my data for this magnetic property of the carbon steel. And this is one very, very crucial step that a lot of eddy current systems are not doing. They're just providing this data as you see it on the screen here and call it a day without, without uh, compensating for liftoff, compensating for all these things that will affect the depth. So I will do this, uh, this what, what we call the user material calibration is essentially the fact of putting your cursor at a clean location. So right here, you know, I see that I have a flaw right there. I have another flaw here, but when I, where I put my cursor here, it's clean of any flaw, any, any issue. So I can tell the software this right there is my clean material, so which, which I call my user material. So I go in the shark tab, click user material. Uh, it, on the keyboard, you can also use the shortcut C. So the letter C is for uh, calibration, basically calibrate the user material. And as you can see, it made the huge difference on the data just in, in a fraction of a second, all of a sudden you have your uh, clean data without that background noise caused by the magnetic properties. It also affected the depth. I, I, will, I will talk about the depth right now, but it also affects how the, the depth is measured because if, if I have a, a pipeline alloy and a pressure vessel alloy, and in, in Asia, for example, they use, they use uh, some types of alloys that are different from North America that have different properties, different tensile, tensile strand and different magnetic uh, properties. So we need to compensate for it accordingly. And this is what the software is doing right now. So what are we looking at exactly? This C scan here, let's just consider that top view where you have the, the green and red coloring. Every single of those lines is made from the signal of one sensor. So at the, at the top of my scan, I have this uh, sensor right there, the first one that creates basically a line of color, a line of, of data. This is what you see. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but here it says F1 depth zero one, it means it comes from the first sensor. As I go down depth zero two, zero three, zero four, all the way down to 22, because this is, this is the final, uh, the final sensor here that is causing the signal. So the, 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 the top C scan, usually the one in green is the one we use to detect the indication. So right away we can tell that, okay, right here, there's definitely something going on. Uh, I'm used to work with sharks, so I know that this is very typical of a crack. Uh, there's another big one right there, and maybe possibly some kind of little yellow dot here. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. To get help, if in this case, the third flaw, I'm not sure if it's a crack or if it's just noise from the, 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 the cap of the weld, uh, I can use the second C-scan, the one we call LENT. This one is essentially a differential signal that uh, shows the big, a really strong, uh, strong peak of signal at the beginning of a flaw and at the end of a flaw. And this is, uh, this is shown with the blue and red color. So if I go here, the blue and the red dots are the beginning of my crack and the end of my crack. This is useful, first of all, to make sure that this is really a, a crack. This is really a surface breaking defect that we're inspecting. 
But this is also useful to, to measure the length of the flaw because all you have to do is to take the, the beginning end and the software automatically calculates the length. So another one here, we have this blue red uh, combination telling us this is actually a real crack. And the third one we were not sure about, you also have this blue and red uh, combination. So it, it tells you without a doubt that there is something there. Maybe it's not a deep crack. Maybe that's why it, it shows as a really shallow and really pale signal, but there's definitely something there. Now to measure the depth and to report our indications, you just need to put your cursor in the vicinity of the crack. So let's, let's take this first one, for example. And you have multiple ways to report them. They can be called cap cracks, toe cracks, heat affected zone, uh, transverse cracks as well. I haven't talked about this, but the, the shark in one single pass does detection for both axial and transverse cracks. You have some, the, the view at the bottom is actually a, a view TR of the, the transverse indication. So you'll be able to pick up a crack that would be cross across the weld, for example, across the cap. So in this case, this is a toe crack. So I'll just use the indication TOEC, click. I will save my setup because this is a brand new in inspection. And I will click add entry to add this, this, uh, this indication into my report. At the bottom here is what is really interesting to us is the depth value. So this crack is a 4.3 millimeter deep. It's about a half inch long, so 12 millimeters, and there is no liftoff. Now let me talk a little bit about this liftoff value because it's very important with shark. I said earlier that shark compensate for the properties of the material, but shark also compensate for the liftoff. So if you have a coating, if you have an epoxy bonding coating, bonded coating, if you have paint, if you have any type of, of material on top of your, of your weld, you can still use shark to inspect through it. It will, it will not be any problem. The only difference is that here, when it says lift off, it will measure your lift off. So if I have two millimeter of epoxy on top of my weld, it would say, well, you know, you have a crack there, it's this depth, this land, but you also have a coating of two millimeters. And what's really important is that the depth you're measuring will be compensated accordingly. So that if I rescan my weld with a one millimeter coating, two millimeter, five millimeter coating, it will always give me this four millimeter depth for my crack. So the software knows how much lift up there is. It will compensate everything accordingly to give you the real crack depth that you care about because you don't, you don't really care about the lift off. You just care about whether or not the crack is significant. So, sorry about that. So I have added this uh, toe crack to my report. I can call another toe crack right here. And finally, that third, so sorry, this middle one here was 4.2 millimeters. And that third one is in the heat affected zone, I believe. And as you can see, it's much shorter. It's also uh, only a quarter of an inch. It's one millimeter depth only, but it's still picked up quite easily using that, uh, that differential C-scan in the middle. In this case here, it's reading a little bit of lift off, a half a millimeter. This is only because of the location of that crack. Sometimes when it's really close to the toe, uh, the way the, the elements are, are, are made, they will there will still remain a, a little gap of air, kind of a diagonal gap of air because the, the, the finger is touching the cap. So it will create some lift off, but we don't care about that because the software compensates for everything. If there's some geometrical features, so my weld here is not too rough. It's pretty good. Sometimes in the field, you know, you could you have all these, these really, really bad welds that are from the 1940s sometimes and that, that you know, they're just not in good shape. Um, it will create a little bit more noise in the data, but it's very easy to differentiate what is a crack from what is just a bump, thanks to this blue and red combination. If you have the opposite, if you have red blue, or if you have nothing at all, it means it's not a crack, it's something else. It could be a, a bump, it could be a weld splatter, it could be a heat, a hard spot or something like that. So just knowing what you're looking for uh, is, is very useful when you use both um, both C-scans. 
At the end now, I've added my three uh, indications. When I click on the Report tab at the bottom, as I can see, I have uh, my three indications. They each have a size, 4.3, 4.21, a length, a local liftoff, and a position. So that if I scan the really long weld, I will have exactly the position. This report, I'm not going to go through that, uh, but you can export this as PDF uh, right off the instrument. Right, So we, when you're in the field with your portable uh, instrument, you can create a PDF, put it on a USB or transfer it via Wi-Fi, send it to your client and be done with the inspection right there. Uh, I just want to take an extra four or five minutes to talk about applications. Uh, so just here is the concept of shark that uh, I've been trying to explain. So as you can see, when you inspect a flaw, you'll, you'll get a certain signal. If you're adding more coding or more liftoff, it will be the same shape of signal, but moved onto the liftoff curve. So the more liftoff you have, the more your flaw will show up on the left side of the impedance. This, this part is more for those familiar with eddy currents. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but essentially the software measures the liftoff by measuring the horizontal shift of your signal, because this is exactly proportional to liftoffs. Of course, the more liftoff you have, the more uh, the smaller your amplitude of defect will be. So this is important for Edify to to characterize this this drop of amplitude to build those kind of diagonal sizing curves that you see here. So independently of liftoff, a three millimeter deep crack will have uh, to touch this diagonal line that we call the three millimeter sizing curve. Same concept for one millimeter and same concept for five millimeters. With this technology, we, we saturate at seven millimeters. So everything that is deeper than seven mils, uh, we will of course detect it very easily, but the software will say this is a seven millimeter plus. So we don't know if it's eight, nine, 10, 50, it's just more than seven millimeter deep. So let's say we have this little, um, let me get the laser right there. We have this little crack signal at the bottom. The software knows it's 1.4 millimeter of liftoff and uh, 1.8 depth because it's it lies in between that one mil curve and three mil curve. So this is kind of how the software processes everything. Of course, the user you can be completely uh, independent from this process. All you care about is to have that final result. So I've presented the bot well, but just uh, I'll finish with this. But just so you know, we also have a specific probe for fillet wells, so that those 90 degree corner wells uh, we have a probe adapted to it. And we also have single element pencil probes uh, for, for more restricted access and, and areas that are difficult to use. And, and talking about applications, those probes have been used for, as I said, pressure vessels uh, in, in a lot of situations. So you can just do a 360 degree wraparound around your tank, around your, your, your vessel and inspect the full well. So that's uh, of course, much, much, much faster than a visual inspection. Same kind of thing with pipelines. Uh, here we have a girth weld. You can just wrap around the pipe with one scan, scan everything. Uh, the tank floors, you have those corner wells at the bottom. You just take the fillet weld probe, scan the entire weld. We're talking one, two minutes of scan, another one, two minute of analysis, and that's it. And finally, we offer also uh, crawlers that can control this shark probe. So as you can see here, this is a really big deal to have to scaffold and, and, and organize ro rope access to do inspection of those kind of, uh, of tanks. If you have a magnetic crawler that can just go around and navigate and scan the wells that you need, you have a camera feed so that you see what you're doing. You have um, uh, lighting and HD, as I said, the HD tilt camera. Having the camera also helps to know if it's just geometric features that you're inspecting or if it, those are actual uh, crack crack indications. There's a video on the on YouTube right here. Uh, if you're interested to see this, this crawler being deployed, it's actually quite impressive uh, how fast it can go to do all your inspection without worrying about the safety of the operators and the rope access and all that. And this is for real my 
last slide here the we have a on the e-learning platform so on the edify academy we have a really well done course on specific on this probe on this technology it goes through the theoretical part to explain how how it works but most importantly it goes through the, the setup in the software so how you calibrate what you click to do your sizing how you report and everything and i think honestly of all the, the classes that we have it's one of the most uh straightforward and, and well done uh, videos i think so if you're interested you can check it out on the edify academy that's all i had it's already 10 25 uh let me see if there are any questions okay okay first question here why can we only use shark on carbon steel uh, this is because of the phase. So as I showed in the PowerPoint at the end, you have a really strong, uh, almost a hundred degree phase between your liftoff and your crack. This is only true for ferromagnetic material. With stainless steel and aluminum and other materials, non-ferrous, uh, this phase is much more closed and it becomes really confusing to differentiate liftoff from conductivity, from cracks. So it just makes things more, more complicated so maybe one day this technology will be expanded to something else but for now this is uh, purely for carbon steel is the scan affected by the roughness of the weld yes it is uh, as i explained you will see more noise and more uh, i would say i would say indications of roughness but using that differential c scan with the blue and red combination you will never mistake a crack for uh, roughness or geometrical features. So even though it will affect the data, you will not be, a, the, the, the crack detection and crack sizing will not be affected by it. What's the difference between shark and shark HR? That's a really good question. Uh, what I talked about here is the more traditional shark that we also call shark butt weld. For, for weld inspection. The Shark HR is for high resolution scans. We use it only in the pipeline integrity uh, for, for stress corrosion cracking. So here in wells, the cracks are mostly individual. So they're, they're, just, they're just linear cracks along the weld. But in the pipeline world, we have colonies, really, really dense colonies of, of stress corrosion cracking. And we need more resolution on our elements to be able to size those colonies and uh, differentiate the depth. So they're not, they're not complementary. They're just for two completely different applications. SCC on one side with the HR and welds for uh, this one that I talked about today. How can we visualize the length of the indication? The visualization that you use is different from HR. Yes, that's true. Uh, the Shark HR does not have this, this length measurement capability because of how it's always colonies, right? So you have the capability to measure the extent of your colony, but you don't have the capability to measure each individual cracks, uh, a crack length. So you don't have those differential sensors that we use here. Uh, for, for this. So the Shark HR is really focused on depth measurements and, and nothing else. Um, we can find HIC cracks in wells. Uh, of course, this is, it, it has to be surface breaking. So eddy currents in carbon steel, you will not penetrate your material. So if, if a crack is ID connected, but not surface breaking on this, on the outside, in carbon steel, there's nothing we can do with this. It takes, uh, you will need phase degree UT2 for, for this crack. But if, yeah, you're right. If, if it's in carbon steel, if it's uh, breaking the surface, we can, we can detect and size all those, all those cracks, all those indications. Uh, can you reserve a time for any question with Adaminkel Columbia? We buy recently for HR. Yes, of course. If if you have uh, if you want to reach out, uh, either reach out directly with um, with, with with whoever you are in contact with uh, in Edify Columbia, but otherwise you'll have my my contact info also. So I'll be happy to uh, to help through a yeah exactly the contact info is right there on the screen. Just send me an email and we can arrange a a call uh, to to discuss the shark or the shark HR.
All right, I think that's all the question we had. Well, thank you very much for uh, your time. Thanks for taking your coffee with me today. I hope you learned something about Shark. And again, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to reach out at the, at the address below. I'll be happy to help. So have a good day. Thank you.